We really try to meet the children at the level that they're at, whether it's within a single subject or in cross-curricular work. And we really try hard to follow the school's policy that we should aim to focus our teaching on each individual child. I'd really like to have something called natural learning, meaning that the children could learn in school in the same way as they did before they started at school. In other words, learning through curiosity and play, impulsive learning with adults supporting the children. The body-wise person likes to learn by touching things. They also like to move around. What does it say here? Dramatize what they're learning. Which of you thinks you're body wise? <laughs> it's all about being conscious about your own starting point, finding out how best you learn. What are the necessary prerequisites? Do you learn best by using your eyes? your ears, or by touching. Usually we have a little of everything in us, but as a rule there is a primary learning system. To learn how to learn also means that I support the natural curiosity that the children are born with, this sense of wondering that they've had for the first five or six years of their lives. All the things they wanted to examine when they were four years old, five years old, we want to give them the opportunity to do the same thing in school. The school isn't a place where you get answers, the school is a place where you can pose questions and find answers. Those of you who have a reading partner should sit with them now. There are lots of situations when the best thing is to gather all 25 children together, but there are definitely many, many more situations where it doesn't make sense. For example, where small teams work together and there are some who want to work alone if they really need to concentrate and improve their own understanding. But the old-fashioned teacher, the communicator, like a priest in church, where the class sits in rows staring into the back of the head in front, I call it bums on benches teaching. It doesn't work. It's history. That fits your reading brains. Yes, that's the series. We create a framework for the children, and in that framework there are some must things, and there are some may things. And we explain to the children why the must things are there, what the goal is, how we're going to work towards it. The children might have some suggestions as to how they best can work. Some want to work alone, some with partners, some in groups. It's very different and depends on your learning system. We all have different methods when learning, which are optimal for us. Some children need peace and quiet around them. Others aren't disturbed by background noise. Some want to be absorbed in work for long periods of time, whilst others need to have things broken up into shorter periods. It's very individual. Today, one's struggle for competences governs whether you get an education, a rich life, an exciting life. Who wouldn't want that? There's a little more substance in this role than in the role as the black. Jeppe? I think it was good. Everybody wants to learn. Everybody wants to be more competent. I feel it's my task and the task of the children's family to support that. It has been a demanding task to readjust. There's nothing as difficult as a change of habits. I know. I just know. Even though you're not supposed to say that, but everything's open for discussion. I know the children should participate in deciding how the school should be run if it's going to be a success. Children come with so many different abilities today, and in the youngest classes there's an age difference of several years within the same class, which makes it unthinkable that all the children at the same time will experience a positive start to learning. 
I think it's exciting to be involved in this different way of teaching. It's something we have to get used to, of course, and we're getting better and better day by day as time progresses.